Well, let's uh, let's begin. And uh, Michael, Martin, do you have your shofar? I think yeah, we, I everybody needs to mute. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Everybody else mute. Mute. <laughs> mute. And uh, everyone else mute. And then Michael, blow the shofar and we'll begin. <clears throat> Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Baruch Shem Kavod Malkut Ho Le'olam Vayet Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Blessed be his name, whose glorious kingdom is forever and ever. Raising the scriptures. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher Kedeshanu Bamitzvotav Vetzevanu Lasok Berarei Torah Blessed art thou, Lord our God, King of the universe, who sanctifies us with thy commandments and commanded us to engross ourselves in the words of the Torah. I was glad when they said to me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet have been standing within your gates, O Yerushalayim. Amen. Amen. It's an interesting time that we live when, where is the house of the Lord? And it's, we, we are in our own homes. But as we come in this way, each home is that part of the, the assembly, the synagogue, synagogue of God. And so we are here in his assembly. I want us to consider Leviticus chapter 9 as the Kohanim begin their ministry according to this section of the parasha. Leviticus 9. Now it happened on the eighth day that Moshe called Aram, his sons and the elders of Israel, that he said to Aram, Take a calf from the herd for a sin offering and a ram for a burnt offering, both without blemish, and offer them before Adonai. You are to speak to B'nai Yisrael, saying, Take a male goat for a sin offering, along with a calf and a lamb, both yearlings, without blemish, for a burnt offering, plus a bull and a ram for fellowship offerings to sacrifice before Adonai, along with a grain offering mixed with oil, for today Adonai appears to you. So they brought what Moses commanded before the tent of meeting, and the entire congregation drew near and stood before Adonai. Moshe said, this is what Adonai commanded that you shall do, so the glory of Adonai may appear to you. Moshe said to Aaron, draw near to the altar and bring your sin altar offering and your burnt offering and make atonement for yourself and for the people. Then present the offering for the people and make atonement for them as Adonai commanded. <laughs> So Aaron drew near to the altar and slaughtered after the sin offering for himself. The sons of Aaron presented the blood to him. Then he dipped his finger in the blood, dabbed it onto the horns of the altar, and poured out the blood at the base of the altar. But the fat, the kidneys, and the cover from the liver of the sin offering, he burned up as smoke on the altar, as Adonai had commanded Moshe. The flesh and the hide he burned in a fire outside the camp. Aaron slaughtered the burnt offering, then his sons presented the blood to him, and he splashed it around on the altar. They handed the burnt offering to him piece by piece along with the head, and he burned them up as a smoke on the altar. He washed the innards and the legs, and he offered them in smoke upon the burnt offering of the altar. Then he presented the people's gift, took the goat of the sin offering, which was for the people, slaughtered it, and offered it for sin, just like the first one. He presented the burnt offering and offered it according to to the decree and i just want to go then to the um just this part near the end uh, verse 21 
but the breast and the right thigh Aaron way for a wave offering before Adonai as Moses had commanded. Then Aaron lifted up his hands toward the people and blessed them. Then he stepped down from presenting the sin offering, the burnt offering, and the fellowship offerings. Moses and Aaron went, then went into the tent of meeting. When they had come back out and blessed the people, the glory of Adonai appeared to all the people. Fire came out from the presence of Adonai and devoured the burnt offering and the fat on the altar. When all the people saw it, they shouted and fell on their faces. I find it interesting that as Aaron and his sons, the Kohanim, are dedicated or consecrated before the Lord, that it requires all of these offerings, the, per, the burnt offering, the sin offering, the grain offering, the wave offering, all of these offerings are required in the setting apart of this priestly family and indeed are they not the ones that are responsible then to uh, take part in all these offerings then for the people so in order to uh, be set apart in office and in ministry they themselves need to first of all have all of these offerings done for them and I consider the the priesthood of all believers. Yeshua completely consumed in the will of God for all that, you know, when he, when he prayed, not my will, but thine be done. In that sense, he became that burnt offering for us, completely consumed in the will of God. Yeshua being our peace offering, he is the one that reconciles us to God. Be ye reconciled. To the Lord. And so he is that peace offering for us. He is the grain offering. He is the very meal upon whom we feast. He is that meal offering for us. And he is that wave offering, that praise to the Lord, that giving of ourselves to the Lord. All of these offerings Yeshua is to us. And then we as his priests in the order of Melchizedek, he is the high priest and we are his priests, all of us that are believers have experienced, we have this, this privilege of priesthood, having experienced just as uh, Aaron's sons experienced all the offerings, we have experienced all of the offerings, if I can put it in plural, that Yeshua fulfilled on our behalf, and we know it personally, and then we can share it with others. And so we have this message. Paul said, uh, we have this message in jars of clay. Uh, perhaps in another translation, it might say message in cracked pots, but uh, we won't go there. <laughs> anyway, but we have this message in jars of clay. We have all of these things as a deposit, as an investment within us, for what? For what purpose? So that we can just say, well, I'm so blessed. Yeshua is my peace offering. Yeshua is my burnt offering. Yeshua is my sin offering. Yeshua is my meal. He is my full fullness. And I'm so blessed. Is that why we've been blessed with his offerings? Is it not just as it was for Aaron and his sons, they were blessed with the offerings in order that they might in turn make those same offerings over and over for the people of Israel. We are given this privilege of ministry, not unto ourselves, but as servants of the Most High God so that we can minister to others. We are now in the counting, time of the counting of the Omar. And as we mentioned this morning, as we were shivering outside, we were talking about how Yeshua, during this very time of the counting of the Omar, he had said to his disciples, you are my witnesses, and you will be my witnesses uh, in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and unto the ends of the earth. In the counting of the Omar, the, the people would go out every day and tag and bring in the early harvest. The barley uh, seems to ripen a little bit early, and it's not ripening all at once, but in, it, almost in stages. And of course, it makes sense because the sower goes out, 
sowing his seed and he doesn't sow his whole field all in one day. Uh, there's a planting season. And so the very first seeds that get planted in week one would uh, ripen before the, the whole of the fields are planted, say in week two or three. So of course the, the plants, the barley will ripen in stages. And so the people would go out and they would come in and they would go out and they would come in and they would go out and come in, bringing their sheaves with them, bringing the early harvests with them every day so that nothing be wasted. What did Yeshua say? You're going to go out. You're going to go into Jerusalem and you're going to bring in a harvest. You're going to go out into Judea and you're going to bring in a harvest. You're going to go out into Samaria and you're going to bring in a harvest. You're going to go out even to the nations of the world and bring in a harvest. This counting of the Omar is a time of mission and evangelism. And we who have been uh, knowing and have been experienced in the sacrifice of Yeshua, have this deposited within us so that when we go out, we go out with the message of his burnt offering, of his peace offering, of his meal offering, of the sin offering, of everything that Yeshua has done for us, he wants to do for others. What do they say is the definition of evangelism? One beggar telling another beggar, where to find bread. Well, it's also this, one priest going out alongside another priest, alongside another priest, alongside another priest, and give forth the gospel of the sacrifice of Yeshua and his resurrection, the first fruits of his resurrection, and let people know that he is the one who is their savior, he is their sacrifice, he is their offering, so that they too may experience this wonderful gospel. And then as priests of the living God go out and it just goes out, comes in, goes out, comes in, goes out, comes in. And we've been doing this for, well, as, as the believers in Yeshua for a couple of thousand years, but the people of Israel have really been doing this for much longer than that. Because they've always had the gospel of God. They've always had the hope of their Messiah. And so we give him praise today and glory to God in this season of the counting of the Omar. God bless you and make you all, each one, a blessing in your going out and your coming in. Bringing your our sheaves with us. Amen. 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 You may unmute and we can have discussion and perhaps that will encourage a, question, a bit of mid-rash. No. Okay. Anyone that would like to begin? Marie, I loved it when you talked about the translation that says cracked pots, um, because <laughs> that it reminds me. <laughs> <laughs> it, it brought to mind the picture in Jeremiah where he says, but the vessel that he was making of clay was spoiled in the hand of the potter. So he remade it into another vessel as it pleased the potter to make. And for Ron and I, that has a particularly special yeah. significance, but I, we were told a picture later on, it was like the, the pot had cracks in it and it's being reformed, but the light of Messiah was shining out through those cracks to those that would mm -hmm. come around into our lives. And it has always been a picture that just has touched my heart. Amen. Amen. The light that he's made us, e even, even the damage, you know, this is interesting that the damage that people come through in their lives, in their experiences Actually, he, he, he doesn't waste that. And, and like you say, it just, mm -hmm. it just makes for ways for the light to shine through. Yeah. Yeah. I, I remember uh, reading somewhere about, um, I don't remember if it was Japan or China. Uh, it was one of the two that when there was a, a vessel that was cracked, they would fill it with gold 
um, and it became mm -hmm. more valuable because um, it you know, had gold and mm -hmm. more stronger and more valuable after. Yeah, it reminds me too of the of the poem, uh, the old violin, and um, I don't. You probably heard it. I I can't remember all the lines, but you the uh, it was an auction and the last item was an old violin and they could barely get a dollar or two or three you know to bid on it and then someone from the back said well let me let me uh just have that old violin and they tuned it up and played the most melodic mm -hmm. music and then the auctioneer said who'll give me one thousand who'll give me two and the people didn't understand what what changed the value of that old violin? And the answer was, it was the touch of the master's mm -hmm. hand. And so, you know, even as, yeah, <laughs> I, I wasn't planning on, on mid rashing on crackpots, but that's all right. <laughs> um, <laughs> we, we all are. <laughs> we all are. So, but you know, the touch of the master's hand makes all the difference when we, when we, um, you know, all the scars, all the troubles. And yet what, what redemption is this? And, and, you know, like even Aaron's sons, they weren't perfect. And, and the very next chapter, we have Nadab and Abihu, and they got themselves into a mess of trouble, uh, you know, offering strange fire before the Lord. And it's in the context, it seems that they'd gotten themselves drunk and things. And, you know, it's, we, we need to be aware of our own failings or our own weaknesses, I'll say, but know that God overcomes that. But isn't it yeah. true that, that those experiences that we do have an opportunity to open the doors with those that we go out and come into yeah. because we can identify with where they are. And so, you know, it ties mm -hmm. in with the counting of the Omer, that going out and relating to those in the world that are broken around us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When we bring him the fragments of a broken life, he uses every bit. Yeah. But it's, it's an interesting thing. You know, we bring in the barley the barley seeds and you know they're they're just kernels and but what what makes them useful what what further thing has to happen for that barley to be useful has to be crushed <laughs> into flour so you know we, we we hey come come to come in be saved and we uh, we don't always tell them and by the way you're going to be crushed <laughs> and made it so that you'll be even more more fit for the master's use <laughs> oh there was one one fellow when i was in college and he said well if i'd have known it was going to be like this i never would have accepted the accepted the lord <laughs> and i said uh, at the time i just said well too late <laughs> yeah. and so he just took it <laughs> <laughs> on balance, it's a good deal. Yeah, on balance. Yeah, overall, it's a good deal. Yeah, and it brings joy, no matter how difficult it can be. <laughs> yeah. Joy beyond yeah. understanding. Sometimes yeah. we even yeah. don't know why exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, yeah. it's it's important to. I, I just want to go back to what Ali had said. Uh, the the art of repairing pottery yeah. with gold yeah. came from Japan. And it was in the 15th century. But what was interesting is when they had sent this fine china to China to repair it, they put staples and it looked ugly. And when we don't have Jesus repairing our hearts, it is ugly. But, but, but the Japanese did this with the art of gold being the repair because it would make it look as new and more valuable. So with Jesus' blood... We are new, made whole. We're a new creation. Therefore, we are invaluable. Mm -hmm. Oh, love it. Well, thank mm -hmm. you. Amen. Expanding on that, that, that's beautiful. Amen. Thank you, Sunil. Yeah. And by the way, Sunil, next week, Sunil and Sheila will be bringing the, the message, the presentation. So I want to encourage you to uh, you know, come online next week and We'll hear from Sunil and Sheila. Oh, we'll we'll yeah. certainly take your prayers from now till then. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, so tell your friends. <laughs> oh.
Anyone else that would like to like to share uh, from the parish hall reading or the scriptures today? Is that herb over the corner in the right hand corner? I was just reading that Leviticus about uh, Aaron's sons yep. being um, taken up uh, for making strange fire. Um, mm -hmm. And one of the things I wasn't clear on, <clears throat> I, I did check it, was that when Moses was upset with Aaron and his other sons for not eating the um, the offering, because uh, and um, Aaron said. I forgot what his response was in the Bible, but Moses was satisfied with it. And what Aaron was saying, there's another part in the Bible that says you're supposed to eat that offering with rejoicing. And because he had lost his sons, he was grieving and felt he would add sin if he ate the offering and not rejoice. So he abstained. And that's what Moses was saying. Yeah. That, yeah. Is that answer. It's mm -hmm. not that clear in scriptures, but when you look at it, yeah, but you know what it, it does? It, it, it points out that the Torah is not just arbitrary and no matter what this is, you know, it, it's, it's so, it's so, you know, that you must, you must, you must, and you, and there's no reasoning. You know, it says that, that there is um, understanding, that God, God has mercy and understanding with, yes, the, the Torah instruction, even as any parent would. Um, you know, with a child, I mean, you, you set out the guidelines and, you know, I mean, we've heard every excuse under the book, but, but, but at the same time, you are patient and, and uh, with some understanding for, you know, your children. So same thing with God and us. Well, David ate the showbread. That was also because he was, yeah. and, and, you know, so there are examples, you know, where God is not rigid. I mean, he, he does mm -hmm. look at the situation. You know what I find is that um, you need to look at the scriptures in both what we say precept and example. The precept will give more the, the general, what's generally true. And then, but you also need to look at the examples or what do they call it? Uh, precedents. The, the, and because there are, um, even, even with... Uh, uh, let's let's take the topic just for a moment of women in ministry. I mean, if you take this the scriptures just you know in in their in their most thing you know well you know it's it, it, there's not not anything there that says they should, but you see the examples of Deborah, yes. of Phoebe, of you know others, and you say aha and and Priscilla. So you by the example you say aha. So there is something here. And that the scriptures didn't spell out in precept, but they do show by example. So I think there's there's that in our interpretation. That's right. And thus we can learn more about God. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. And and aren't we? I, I hear my grammar teacher, are we not, <laughs> in my head, are we not, when we look at the scriptures and, and see that, are we not trophies of, of his grace? And, you know, he, what does God do? He says, look at, look at this person, look at that person, look at what I've done. And, and he's, he's, <laughs> how can I, 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 there, I, there must be better word than proud. But he is, he is blessed, actually, to call us his and to see his work in our lives. And God is pleased. He, well, the Bible does say he spins for joy over us. And God spins for joy over his work in us. That's amazing. I haven't read that. Oh, Zephaniah... He was single to it? us, isn't it? Uh, Zephaniah 3.17, maybe? I'm not hmm. sure. Hmm. The addresses are gone, but the, the, the scripture is there, but the addresses are gone. <laughs> but in Zephaniah, um, the, the, the literal is he spins for joy. He re, I think it's he rejoices over you with joy, with exceeding joy. And, like yeah, and, and literally it's he spins for joy over you. Yeah, Zephaniah 3. 
317? Yeah. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> you <can laughs> the, me <laughs> the memory, the memory is there. <laughs> At least sometimes. Yeah. With with uh, scripture blessing. Sure. It's been snowing the whole time. The whole time you've been talking, the whole time. Crazy. Here's that. Here's you that. wanted to see a picture of a pop of light shining through? Here's my graph background. Ah, that's a pot with light shining through. Beautiful. It's beautiful. I have a question. I'm not sure if anybody can answer. Okay. The importance on the dates that we do these. So I know when they were in the temple and where they were, because um, they're told, to guess what day and uh, when they're supposed to do those, uh, how important it is to reach regards to the time or day that we do do these. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this we had we actually had a little bit of this discussion this morning outside. Um, you know, when like where do we even start the count uh, with first fruits? Uh, because this year Passover began on a right after the Sabbath. Um, and so the, the first day of, of first fruits or the first day of Passover rather was a Saturday night into Sunday. Uh, pardon me for using those <laughs> calendar names, but um, so then some people say, well, then first fruits was that was that day. But in the scriptures, it's first fruits is to be the day, the first day after the Sabbath of pass of passover so th there you know there was a discrepancy this year of when people started celebrating first fruits whether it was the last uh sunday in march or the first sunday in april <laughs> and then uh so then that that of course we know that we are now in the counting of the omar but which day it is it's there's a difference of opinion uh i i for myself i like to go with the scripture and so i'm i'm using april 4th as the um as first fruits but others don't so that for this year once in a while it's it's uh you know the two calendars don't really ma mesh that well so once in a while it's a little bit dif difficult so if we have... sorry go ahead Jana. Isn't it wonderful to know that when Messiah comes, he's going to sort all those <laughs> interesting <laughs> questions out? Yeah, yeah. And, and, and what he says, it will be. <laughs> yeah. So we're, and, and for the most part, to answer my, Mike's question, for the most part, um, there's once in a while there's these discrepancies, but more often than not, it's, it's not that, that tricky. It's, it's really pretty much straightforward. Uh, now, what we do on those days, um, you know, I think that for sure, uh, the, the weekly Sabbath, I mean, that's, that's unmovable whatsoever. And uh, the feast days, uh, the Bible does tell us to, you know, convocate, to call a holy convocation. Um, I think, you know, go with Leviticus 23, of course. And then... Um, um some I, I i think we're in is it in colossians that it, it talks about uh, new moons and sabbaths i don't think that's telling us oh it doesn't matter i think it's telling us that some people um mark them in a very very special uh very precise way or not precise isn't the right word um uh, but but very very uh, intense intensely they they uh, and it's not saying it doesn't matter i think people get get go into colossians and they see that oh yeah sabbaths don't matter new moons don't matter that's not what that's what he's saying he's saying is some people will will to them it's very intense to do that other people acknowledge it but it's not as an intense thing and i think that's where 
you know, we, we need to have some leeway, not with the dates of it, but in how we, how we honor it. I think that's in Galatians and the people he's writing to in the Galut are former pagans who are now beginning to practice the festivals that are listed uh, in Leviticus 23. And he's telling them, don't let anyone criticize you for celebrating these events. Mm, yeah, yeah. Heard them. yeah, yeah. So it's, but the thing is, is yes, do celebrate them, but how you celebrate them, uh, you know, don't let anyone, you know, if, if some, you know, I, I think we need to be careful about demanding that well, you must you must intensely do this. You know, you can mark something and acknowledge it. It's just like some people, um, you know, some people will know what their birthday is, but you don't dare remind them. <laughs> if, we're on, uh, if we're we're on the day and the day is basically like we know the sun comes out up the east and goes to the west and the moon, and they have all their cycles and everything is the same all the time and nothing changes. Mm -hmm. um, we have leaves, you know, spring, summer, winter, fall, and it's always the same. They're not mixed up orders sometimes, and sometimes mm -hmm. different. Nothing changes. Um, if he says he's the same yesterday, today, and forever, uh, well, then if all these are online, and then of course seven and seven goes into everything uh, with prophecies and Daniel and stuff, then where is it where? Every year, the day is always on a different day, considering we know the seven days all the time. Oh yeah. Well, well, the reason for that is it, it. If you if you were to work with just the Jewish calendar, Passover would be every year on Aviv uh, or Nisan fourteen. It's the same uh, one, yep. uh, but it's the same. It, it is the same. The problem is, is that our calendar or the Gregorian calendar it has 365 days. The Jewish calendar has 360 days. And so they don't mesh. And so it's, it appears from our, from a Gregorian standpoint, it appears like, like Passover is moving all over the calendar. But if you just use the Jewish calendar, you would find that every Aviv 14 is Passover. Right. Yeah. So it's it's just that the two calendars are not are not synchronized, and so if you're on one calendar, boy, you know Passover was in March this year. Next year it's in April. Next, you know, it just is all over the map. But for if you were just on that one calendar, it would be as precise and as you know. <laughs> the biblical calendar the bi is always the same. Yeah. Av fourteen. Yeah. So whenever that Passover evening happens. You can, you can count count on it that that's a V fourteen. <laughs> what, what day was Passover last year? Oh, um, a V fourteen. <laughs> well, yeah, it was a v, but on on our calendar. <laughs> on our calendar, I'm not sure. I think it was in April, but I'm not sure. It was a little bit er, earlier this year, but it, it does it can it it can vary, you know, all the way from. Um, third week of March to about the third or fourth week of April and then and then well I don't want to get it too confusing but it, it can be um, even um, the two can then separate by a whole month um, depending on the sighting of the new moon what if I have so, a calendar that gives you every day every, like every, each day each year is always mm -hmm. the same day the same time like if it's the 14th it's always on a tuesday so it doesn't matter what year you're in every year it's always on a tuesday it's always on the 14th uh and it lines up with the barley yeah. first fruits yeah. and it does it's not always though on on a it, on the day of the week it does it does shift around on the day of the week because um and even even in the jewish calendar it will shift um from, di from the day of the week, whether it's a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. That's why there's certain years, um, AD 28 and AD 31, that actually line up with um, the, the Wednesday, the Wednesday Passover, which is, so one of those two, two years 
either the 28 or the 31 was the um, probably the year that Yeshua died. So it, the day the day does shift, mind you, not with Shabbat. Shabbat is always on that Saturday, but the other days can shift a bit, and because the the seventh day of the week is always the seventh day of the week, but the the day of a month, just like in our calendar, the days of the months do shift shift around. But every Saturday is still Shabbat. So like for four or five years and what like day by day kind of thing mm -hmm. and at, at the end of the fourth year it still was on the same day of the week mm -hmm. but marie there's also some some years there are two months of a door yes yeah every you see they we have a leap a leap day every four years they have a leap month every what six years or something something like that so they they actually see that they're because they're on a 360 day cycle and so five days get lagged every year so it's about every six yeah so every six year every six months no every six years every six years there's the extra month of adar and that's usually when uh, the two um, the two festivals between the church and the and the Jews really separate out because of that double month. And six times five is thirty. That's the one month. Yeah, yeah. So that's the extra month. So they do account for that leap. They instead of a leap day, they have a leap month. Oh, <laughs> okay. Just to keep us on our toes. Yeah, yeah. But I, I understand, I understand, Mike, what you're going to sleep getting at. back, huh? No. Yeah. I just I the camera on right now. It's the inner camera. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, I, you know, the thing is, is that, is that we, we need to, um, when we're, we're dealing with the, the Jewish calendar, to, you know, take it with full, you know, full respect, full uh, reverence, and, and do these things on those days even if it floats around a bit on our calendar yeah all righty anyone else it's... tell us how the time in the park went oh <laughs> we miss we miss you <laughs> mm -hmm. We missed you, but we, but oh. Janet, you, it was chilly, so it was really the wind it was, was cold. cold. Yeah, it was yeah. cold. Somebody yeah. turned on the air conditioning. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but yeah. but it was there was there was uh, uh, altogether well for the most part twelve, and then another two joined, so uh, fourteen altogether that were there, and um, no, it was a lot of dancing. Uh, that was that was. Um, <laughs> Heating up. For heating up. That was very yeah, practical. Yeah, yeah. It yeah. was the first time I have seen that Shabbat Shel Shalom, that most of the congregation was dancing. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Maybe you should have your winter services outdoors also. <laughs> yeah. 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 Only 12, don't forget. Yeah. But it was, it, but I was, you know, I, for, for being that uh, uh, weather, I was pleasantly surprised that there was as many as there were. So it, it you know, the weather will be warming up. So yeah. it was good to see people, you know. In it was the, wonderful. Yeah. We were very enthusiastic. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Especially yeah. Marta. <laughs> yeah. Everybody, everybody. Yeah. It was very joyful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was overjoyed to see the sunshine this morning because last night it was torrential. And mm -hmm. so it was nice. And I thought, oh, well, it's not going to be too bad. But then the wind picked up. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, Lila uh, told me that even before morning, uh, they had hailing there. Oh, oh, wow. yeah. yeah, yeah. I saw hail on a trampoline. So we were spared all. all yeah, that. yeah. Hailing today or yesterday? Um, overnight. 
Oh, Wasn't there... It was in early morning, like between four and five. Oh, okay. Oh. Hailing yeah. at her place. Mm-hmm. Here, it just in Abbotsford, it just was a heavy rain in that time. Yeah. And I thought, oh no, we will be so wet. And it changed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we had yeah. even sunshine. A retired pastor that lives across from me, he was sharing. Uh, I saw him outside and started to talk, and he said how the Lord had showed him that we have authority to tell the weather how to be and how the Lord had answered that a few mm-hmm. times. So maybe mm-hmm. somebody was praying this morning. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. I, I yeah. remember, Anna, uh, I was a new believer, and I would, I would pray, and uh, I had a friend, and I was complaining. I said, I had a headache. And she said, oh, I'll pray for you. And honestly, I've never heard prayer like that. She was like rebuking my headache and (laughs) taking authority over it. And I was like, whoa. (laughs) And it left. I can't remember, but I remember thinking, wow. (laughs) She's taking authority over my headache and just rebuking it. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Well, you know, know, part, part of deliverance is getting our mind off it. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and, and it really you know like it's the it, what does the bible say put off and put on so yeah isaiah says that uh, he will keep us in shalom shalom as we keep our mind fixed on him mm-hmm. 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 well there is something at least that's the beginning that's the really the beginning of of the you know the fear of the lord is the beginning of wisdom and it's you know if if we if we continue with our our thought processes that are mm-hmm. so neg you know if we say well pray for me but <coughs> we're not going to give up the the negative thoughts you know it, it's like you know we can pray for someone but if if it's like well no i i'm going to be still negative in my thinking well you know that's not going to help the deliverance so we need to really get on, on side and on board with what the Lord wants to do in our lives. Amen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm so looking forward when we will be having normal service all together with the kids, mm-hmm. uh, you know, three classes, all that. Mm, yeah. Yeah. That will mm-hmm. be wonderful. To God's ears. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 What is normal? <laughs> what is normal yeah. what was normal that's normal what is in the bible that's normal what yeah. god says that's normal <laughs> I, w- I want super normal <laughs> i want supernatural yeah. Super yeah. 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 yeah yeah and but the uh, dancing in the park uh, we might uh, is good uh, we might keep it even in the future yeah, it's a wonderful. There, beside the regular. Yeah, there, after. there were people. Um, there were people that stopped by and and yeah. and you know there was one couple that kind of gave us a thumbs up. That um, I'm not not sure if they were Dutch or German or what, but they were you know they were happy to see us and and uh, there was one family that came by and then the children started kind of dancing in circles. And so, you know, they kind of mirrored us a little bit. Yes, they so, were. Yeah, there was there was some some good um, connection, yeah. and and we ha- <laughs> there was a number of Sikh um, gentlemen that were sitting that were sitting kind of on the on the corner of the shelter, but they were sitting in the sun, and and at first we were in the shade, but <laughs> and shivering as could be. And so we said, uh, Michael uh, Spetko and I and, and, and um, Ron, you know, encouraged the, the people or, or our people to come into the sunshine, uh, you know, even if it was next, right next to these Sikh gentlemen. And they, they took it. They, you know, they, they, were, they didn't get up and leave. They, they sat, sat in their sun and we were right there dancing right beside them. So. Actually, when we started to dance, they really paid attention. The, their they culture danced. loved dancing. Yeah. They yeah. danced. Yeah. Yeah. They were yeah. 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 So, um, yeah, it was, it was good. Good. That's good news. Yeah. yeah. So... That's excellent. So are there I, I, any that would like special prayer today? 
I, I'd like us to pray for Nicole's children in the school and for all the children that are really mm -hmm. wrestling with this long, almost year and a half now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Painful yeah. experience. Mm -hmm. Well, Janet, why don't you, yeah, uh, you know, the Lord has brought that on your heart. Yeah. Anything else, Nicole, about that? Yeah, I'm having significant troubles with the 12 year old boy. Um, he's, he's really, um, um, so rude to me and, um, and there's just been so much violence in the home with the boys, um, beating on each other. And it, it's been real, it's been a real mm. hard time really hard mm. time mm. so these boys have grown up in a very violent home and mm -hmm. um the level of respect towards women is just like he won't even answer me he won't even look at me and he won't even talk to me like it's that bad mm. so okay. um, mm. yeah. well yeah would you pray for Nicole's and the children in that this situation? And Nicole, how many children do you care for? Are they Six. all boys? Six? Okay. Um, there's four boys and um, two two girls, Vivian, Willow, and um, and there's just a lot of struggle with Willow and her behaviors, and um, it, it's been it's been really difficult this past year. I can't mm -hmm. tell you how difficult it is. How mm -hmm. often do you have them, Nicole? Every All day. Week? Every, Every day. day? Every yeah. day? Yeah. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah. They, they live yeah. with you. Is that not mm -hmm. right, Nicole? Yeah. 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 We, just yeah started, we just started visitation um, with the family on the weekends. This just started. So, And I just put the kids in school. Um, full time that just started this week so it's I'm I'm just trying to recover a little bit mentally mm -hmm. <laughs> no. mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. well, well yeah do you know what I, I'm going to I'm going to ask Janet if you would pray and also Sheila um, you are a teacher and you know you're you're aware of, ch of child things and so Janet and Sheila if you would pray for Nicole and these yeah. children that that um, God yeah. is, has given her. Janet, if you would start. Oh, our gracious Heavenly Father, we just want to come to you, the one who has the answers for every yeah. circumstance, yeah. every situation, you are with us. <clears throat> and so, Father, first, I just want to hold up Nicole to you, yes, that yes. she has opened her home and her heart to these children who are such great needs, yeah. that you would just give her wisdom, Father, as she tries to deal with each of those wounded places in each yes, child. Wow. Father, that you would pour in your peace to her, but also, Father, that you would pour in your authority, that there would be a, a respect from those children for this woman of God who has the spirit of God within her, and that she would be able to speak to them in a way that they would begin to honor and respect her. Father, we want to pray for those young men who are growing up with these attitudes that um, are going to affect their whole future. And so we pray, Father, that you would um, have divine appointments other than Nicole, that someone will speak into their life as well and bring them to a place where they will acknowledge that they need to uh, change their attitudes. And we know that it can only be done by Messiah coming in, but those broken places yes. need to be healed. So we pray yes. for these young adults that are young children that are with Nicole, that they will be healed in the name of Yeshua. Yes. Thank so you. Father, I thank you for filling her home with your peace, your yes. presence, yes. and that you would continue to strengthen her and we will continue to pray and uphold this yes. household as they serve and are yes. servants for you, the most high God. Yes. Thank mm -hmm. you, Abba, in the name Thank of Yeshua. You, and Sheila, if you would. Mm. Yeshua, we come before you, even thinking that song in Christ alone, and you are our hope and you are, you are the answer. And I pray for these precious, precious children. Mm. I believe every child has a promise over their life. There's a promise over them that rests with them, that wow. you have spoken for them. And we claim these six 
the young people for you, Lord Jesus. And even going back into the public system, I know there are godly men and women who are teaching in the public system. Oh, Lord, I pray that they would cross the path of these young people. Yes. Cross the path mm -hmm. of these young boys and young, young ladies. And they would speak into their lives, even at school. Lord, we come against the things that are out there in the public system, Soji, and different um, things that are not from you, Lord, that would could infiltrate their minds. Lord, I pray for protection over their minds. I pray that they will be open to the things of God mm -hmm. and closed to the things of the mm -hmm. world in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. and, and Lord Jesus, I pray, just as, as Jana has already prayed, um, that these young men and women would see the home that they're in now and see your presence and sense your presence, Yeshua, yeah. in the home and know that they are in a safe and loving environment and they yeah. will begin to sense and feel that love and it is going yeah. to change their attitudes and it will be an yeah. attitude mm -hmm. of, first of all, reverence mm -hmm. to, towards you, Yeshua, and secondly, towards um, mom and dad in the home. Uh, Lord Jesus, I am asking for the blooded the blood over these precious ones mm -hmm. to protect them. Lord, protect their minds for the things that are coming against them in Jesus' name. Lord, mm -hmm. we come against the work of the enemy. And yes. Lord, even a, a seed planted, and we know there's seeds planted in their lives, <clears throat> will rise up now and take root and grow. Yes. Lord, we think of that first fruit, that first harvest, and we're looking forward to seeing the harvest in these young people's lives, mm -hmm, Lord, mm -hmm. they will turn their lives over to you in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, yeah. also come against fear. I see fear in children in school, fear of COVID, wearing masks. It is very different. But I come against that fear in Jesus' name, in mm -hmm. Yeshua's name, in Messiah's name, in Christ alone. It's you alone yeah. that will save. It's mm -hmm. you alone that can protect them by mm -hmm. your precious blood. Oh, we thank you. Thank you in the name of Yeshua. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Are there other prayer requests today? Uh, Ray, uh, can, can we pray for a family whose little three-year-old boy has been diagnosed with leukemia? With, with cancer? Yeah, leukemia. Oh, leukemia. Oh. Uh, it, what what is the boy's first name? Do you know? Theo. Theo. Okay. Um, I'm going to. Ray, are you uh, there? I have to swipe and see. That's or Zalk. Are you, Zalk is there? Zalk, uh, could you pray for uh, Theo, little boy, Theo. just diagnosed with leukemia? Yes. Yes. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, in the name of Yeshua, we are gathering today with your blessing. We pray for your children, your son, Theo. Father, we pray for his healing. Bless him. He's a young boy. He's a long way to go in his life. Please bless him with your healing, with recovering. Make him whole with your love. With the blood of Yeshua, he is healed. And he has a good future. Become a healthy young man grown up and serve in this society and help all the society and and the parents in yeshua name we pray amen 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 and debbie are you there yes debbie uh how is ron doing well he's moved into the depression and anxiety wing of the uh, hospital it, did you know that it used to be called a homeward asylum <laughs> Oh, it's that old a building. It's been around forever. It uh, mm -hmm. so it's so anyway. So he's in the different wing, and uh, I suppose challenge would be. Um, I, I he's not really at that place where he is able to fully acknowledge his the repercussions of his probably year and a half long um, relapse. It was that long. I don't know mm -hmm. that he's still able to uh, face those things. And um, he's, <laughs> he's planning to come straight home after he's done there. And I'm thinking, ay, 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 ay. I, I mean, it's not like I don't want my husband home. It's just that mm. every time that he's gone out, he's come really straight tough, home. Huh? Mm -hmm. Really tough. Problem, oh, yeah. The problem with that oh, is um, 
triggers. He, I trigger yeah. him just by breathing. <laughs> so, so. Mm-hmm. And uh, I don't know that being here will be helpful. Uh, n- number mm-hmm. one, you need to take all of the skills that you've learned and apply them. And that's really difficult to do when the person that's next to you 24 seven is, is bothering you just by taking up the same airspace uh, because it, mm-hmm. it funny because they're they're learning all kinds of tools and and the family members don't really get much of anything so you don't know what's going on you don't know how yeah you, like like you almost need some training as well and so we're we'll pray that mm-hmm. he's open for for that to happen before he comes and that he mm-hmm. pray that he's open mm-hmm. to okay so if coming here is the best option let that be clear but also to keep his options all open. Not, mm-hmm. I think one of the reasons that he might want to come home is that it's, it's cheapest. <laughs> mm-hmm. You won't have to spend money. And so that's not necessarily the best mm-hmm. rationale. Um, yeah. And wisdom for me to know how to be graceful and how to when and how to bring things up. Because keeping in mind addicts in early recovery are extremely sensitive. Mm-hmm. And, uh, mm-hmm. so and how 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 i can bring up the fact because you know when you <laughs> when you've been through something like this you, you're just waiting for the time to say you know it's been about you for the last two years what about me when, <laughs> when do i get to go to treat and get fed and taken care of for a year <laughs> so <it's just> like, <laughs> that, that oh. needs to be reined in you know that's kind yeah. of that come out even though you feel like it yeah can't come well, out well debbie so. i'm you know you're with family here and I, I i appreciate the fact that you you know you can express yeah. you know exactly how you feel that you don't have to pretend you yeah. know oh i'm i'm doing you know 100 percent myself because you have you have needs as well uh i'm going to ask michael martin uh if you would pray for both uh debbie and her husband ron uh, that the Lord would give them um, that direction. So if you can unmute and pray. Father, I just want to raise up to you, Debbie and Ron. You're going through some great trials. And having spoken to another friend of mine too, I understand a little bit about addiction and these things and the learning about how difficult this is. Lord, I just pray that you just give them that comfort to help them to fully realize there's a big family behind Debbie and Ron to support them during this trying time, as it is a difficult trail. Lord, I pray that Ron can have the strength and the ability to continue making the decisions he's doing. So far as I understand it, he's making these decisions continually and he's fighting for it. And that's all we can can pray for if he continues Mm -hmm. to play. Give him the strength to continue to play. This also raised up Debbie as well to give her some more of that humor inside that's keeping her afloat because this is her strength and she's seeing this through and what a trooper she is. We thank you, Lord, for her that she stands beside the person she loves so much. Mm-hmm. 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 Able to be this way if you are, your hand is so sovereign. Mm-hmm. Amen. 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 Our prayers are with you, Debbie and Ron. And, um, you know, (laughs) the Lord is able, as he heals Ron, may may he also uh, bring heal, because you've been on, you know, the, probably the receiving end of a lot of stuff. And you, and you need a healing as well. One of the um, things that Ron always, one of his quotes has been um, from the um, Chronicles of Narnia. And it's, it says um, something about Aslan. He's not safe, but he's good. And so I, I'm, I'm gathering up the courage to say, you know what? I, I kind of need safe. <laughs> and yeah. you're, not, you're not a lion. And I, I'm looking for safe. Mm-hmm, <laughs> for a mm-hmm. change. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, we we I I believe that that your congregation, your family of faith agrees agrees with that heart heartfelt prayer. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Well, I just have a question, um, Murray. Uh, 
Are we on? No. Yeah, you're, yeah. we hear you. Okay. Does Nicole have any male influence in that house or what? She's got yeah. to handle six people. Uh, no, no, the no, boys no, no. are notoriously competitive. Yeah. So they're going to get, yeah. they're going to be showing off for the girls or whatever. Be, like, what, what, what do they do with their time? What were the, they, they focus on something? What interests do they have? Is there any way of getting them diverted from themselves onto something else in front of them? Like a, a hobby well, or something, yeah. some focus. Is there, is there a... COVID, that makes things really different. Oh, yeah, right. COVID, yeah. And um, also, um, you know, they, they're in counseling. Mm -hmm. They have visitations with the grandma. With It was three separate visitations, but the mom and dad have moved in together now. And um, so a lot of their spare time is like, we're ushering them here. My husband's ushering them there. Mm -hmm. We have a one-on-one -on -one with one trying to separate the kids. And like I said before, they were, they were online learning for over a year here. And um, the only one who was in regular school is Willow. She's at the Christian school. So that's been one saving grace, but um, it, it's, um, you know, the house is only so big. We have a big yard. Sometimes we try and set them out and stuff like that. But I do have a husband and he does try to help. He does try to separate them. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we're dealing with um, uh, habitual fighting that's been, you know, the screaming is less. You know, thank God we live in the country mm -hmm. because the police mm -hmm. would be called all the time. You know, it's, oh, it's just gosh. something else. Hmm. But, Those um, children have complex how, how, old are, how old are they? Um, 12, 9, 9, 7, 5, and 3. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Well, that's, you got some real emotional gap. You got development gaps that are huge. 9 to 12 is, is wow. miles. I used to teach in uh, Twelve, grade 7 to 9. Uh, school, the, the middle school is called, yeah. and the difference between uh, a nine-year-old and the interests and whatever, he's constantly trying to show how old he is <laughs> and how important he is, and so if he hasn't got something to prove that he's so important, uh, some hobby, some something that is, um, so to say, neutral territory. The 12 year old is in a different space, but he gets, com he gets competitive as well. There was a group of uh, mm -hmm. uh, a school out in Manitoba, it was all boys, 125 of them. And they used to, they, they were led by Jesuits and the Jesuits used to have this council morning and they say, what kind of state are these guys in? Well, they're kind of restless. They go, okay, we're gonna have six hours of portaging. You're gonna go up in a canoe and you're gonna portage and carry this thing one one lake to the other. And then it said they found that, that settled them down to, to have something that was beyond themselves, but something that, that, that uh, required um, reliance on somebody else, reliance rather than competitive. Nicole? And it, seemed to, it seemed to work. Do you, mm -hmm. do you find that the children, because of they they obviously probably have complex trauma, that their physical age does not necessarily match their emotional age, and therefore they might be four year olds in a twelve year old body? Do you find that this sometimes? Is, this is the problem. This is yeah. the problem, and due to neglect, um, the twelve year old has a grade two reading level. The nine year old has a no. I'm sorry. The 12-year-old had a grade one reading level. The nine-year-old had a grade two reading level. So this, this mm -hmm. impacted mm -hmm. the learning. The mm -hmm. three-year-old, he couldn't even speak. So he couldn't Not even talk, yeah. you know? Wow. And mm -hmm. so he's just he to get words now. But the language that they do have is punching each other out. And the thing is, is that the, the nine-year-old recently has said some pretty horrible things to the son. To the 12-year-old, he says, you're the reason why we're in care. 
because you told the police about mom. And so, and the 12 year old burst into tears. And so there's a lot of pain in this family mm -hmm. and um, a lot of blame and everything. And on top of it, the parents, of course, um, <laughs> they have a terrible relationship, but they're trying, they're trying, but uh, there's two, there's another baby out there and then the mom's pregnant. So there's so much emotions mm. going on in this family and like crazy. It's just, mm -hmm. it's really tough. It sounds to me like they have to be separated. There's, there's, that you can't mutually handle that di differentiation in age and, and, and mental ca capacity. I mean, that was, who, who wished this on you? This is a, a terrible combination. I mean, this is this is a personal ask, but there's certainly physical is the only thing you can handle with this kind of thing. That mentally, it's not going to work between twelve and nine and seven and six and three. It's just not possible. So there has to be something physical that they you know, shoveling. Or, <laughs> I don't know something that is. Um, Located within them themselves, you can do it. I, I think you bring up a good point, uh, Merv. Um, just maybe even separating them now because there is a lot of <coughs> healing that has to take place in counseling before they can come together. Oh, yeah. No, children's <laughs> services won't do that. I, I've been a foster parent for complex yeah. needs. Children's services won't do that. The whole purpose of them being in care is to rebuild the family. And if they live in different homes, that becomes impossible. And I've worked a lot with the government here in Alberta and seen a lot of improvements in how that's handled. But they won't separate a family if they have a choice. They keep the siblings together. So unless they're an infant, yeah. they won't separate them out. And so there has to be supports in place to help the foster family. And so what they need to what the social workers need to do is get those supports in place because the whole goal of this is to get those kids back home. Mm -hmm. They probably keep them together because they want them to learn how to manage in that unit. And they, if, they, yes. if the goal is to get them back into the family, they pro that's probably the goal is, is, well, you've got to learn how to get along. So yeah, it's, but uh, Nicole, our, we will we will make this a matter of yeah. prayer uh, for each of us to yeah. really hold you up and and yeah. you know don't don't feel like you have to wait and you know from from Sabbath to Sabbath you know if you need if you need someone to speak with or you know just care uh, you know do do connect do reach out to us because we're you know we're not just we're not just uh sabbath friends we are you know friends at all times you so, know what nicole um having grown up in a in a mm, there, well it was a very abusive family i'll tell you personally as a child i couldn't accept kindness i could t i could accept punches and violence but the minute somebody showed me kindness i would react very badly so yeah, it's it's hard. Strangely enough, foreign. Strangely enough, if they're reacting badly because you're kind to them, that means you're getting to them. Strangely enough, and they're they're afraid to show. They're afraid to let down their guards and accept that kindness because it's going to be taken away the next minute. So that's just to explain a little bit, like because I understand these kids very well. <laughs> I haven't mm. even met them. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, um, you know. Uh, Maybe, uh, pardon? Can I just say something? I've only just been able to hug and for the, the boys, two of the boys to receive hugs just only recently. That's, mm. and they've been with me for almost a year. Mm. Yeah. Oh. You're doing well, Nicole. You're doing really yeah. well. Oh, you our heart yeah. is about you. I, I don't know, uh, Nicole, if, if you can, uh, you know, reach out. I, and I don't want, I don't want to, uh, I don't want to actually say who, but it, all of those that are listening here today, if, if you feel in your heart in, that you need to, or would like to reach out in a special way to Nicole, 
uh, maybe let me know so I can I can connect you with her. And uh, I don't want to just assign things, but where the Lord is is leading, just so that that we are you know we're family and we need to make sure we're taking care of each other. So Nicole, I want you to know that you're not alone in this. That um, you know and and where whatever you know not that we can do a lot but whatever we can do we certainly want to yeah yeah nicole we love you very very much and we really uh we respect you very very much for all your work it's years of uh, work we, you will see once we all will see in heaven what the difference you made really really we sometimes are not aware on this side of glory Mm -hmm. but we will and i'm very glad that you have uh, for your joy and your husband joy that land that you know it's a very nice thing mm -hmm. because you need that sometimes that mm -hmm. peaceful place yeah. yeah and we are proud of you yes mm -hmm. amen uh kathy may I ask, may I oh. ask go may ahead I ask for one one very important for my mm -hmm. son tanner Mm. His health is falling apart, and we are trying to help him. And he's 27 years old with the little wife and family, and he he's in so much pain he can hardly work, and um, he doesn't know why we've been sending him to doctors and naturopathic doctors, and we don't know what's going on. I think it's spiritual, to be honest with you. Mm but please pray for their family and mm -hmm. him. So that's Tanner. What, what's his wife's name? April. April. Uh, April. Yeah. April. So Tanner and April. Joanne, would you pray for um, Nicole, uh, for her son Tanner and his wife April? Father, we come to you with so many pains. And I just pray right now for Tanner and for April and all that they are dealing with. You know better than we do what that is. I pray that you will put your hand around their situation, that you will bring safety and healing and whatever they need, that they will know that your presence is there. And I pray that you will give Nicole a peace that you are in control of what is happening with her family. That you can give her the strength that she needs. Mm -hmm. And the comfort that she needs. And the break that she needs. We just ask this, Father, in your name. Amen. 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 Mm. Amen. Thank you. Uh, Kathy. Thank you. Uh, Kathy, we, I'm just wondering how, uh, how Kathy is doing. If you could, yeah. Uh, yeah, Kathy kind of ran out of energy. She was up, well, kind of had a bad night up early. Um, so she's laying down right now. Mm -hmm. Tapping. And how are you doing, Ron? The Lord is with me. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, lots of extra things to do, but yeah, uh, we're making it through. And then Kathy's hair is growing back, so <clears throat> that tells you she's a little better too. Mm -hmm. You know, okay. gaining an energy, energy slowly. Amen. Uh, Samuel, would you pray for our brother Ron and his wife Kathy? Um, as they're coming out of this tr this trial of the chemotherapy and things. So Samuel, if you would unmute and uh, if you would pray for Ron and Kathy. Mighty and everlasting Father, we lift Ron and Kathy into your care, everlasting God. Mighty God, you know all things, mighty Father. And you know how far you brought them, mighty God. But you finish every word that you have started in our lives, mighty God. And in that sense, mighty Father, Lord God, we know that the word that you started, the healing, mighty Father, the restoration, 
Mighty God, that you started in their lives, mighty God, they're going to see it to a successful completion. Mighty Father, we ask you to walk with them in each step of the way, mighty God. We ask you by the power of your Ruach Kodesh to fill their lives, to fill their hearts. Mighty Father, Lord God, with your love, with your joy, with your peace. Mighty Father, Lord God, because it is only you that who can enable us, mighty Father, Lord, to overcome all these issues. So we pray that you sustain them, Father, Lord, you sustain Apply all their needs according to your riches in glory, Jesus. Our Father, Lord God, we will hear testimonies. We will hear stories, Father, Lord, of, of restoration. We will celebrate, mighty Father, Lord God, that they have fully, Father, Lord God, come out, mighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ. But whatever challenge, mighty Father, Lord God, that they went through, especially our sister, Kathy, whose faith in you goes stronger each and every day, and we praise you, and we thank you, Father, mighty God. So we pray, mighty God, we lift them into your hands. We lift their home. We lift their family. And our Lord Jesus Christ, for full restoration, mighty God, that comes from your throne. Full restoration, that comes by your grace and your mercy. We say we should boldly come to your throne of grace to obtain mercy and find grace to help in our time of need. We ask you, mighty God, we lift them up to your throne. We lift them up into the most holy place of the heavenly sanctuary. Mighty Father, Lord God, where you, our Lord, perform your work of restoration in our life, mighty King. So we pray, mighty Lord God, and we ask you to fill their heart with joy, peace, love, patience, kindness, goodness, mighty mm. Father Lord. All the gifts that you have promised your children, may it be upon their household today and forevermore. Amen. 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 And we do serve. What a mighty God we serve. Mm -hmm. And this is the one that is more than enough and more than able to meet every need. And he is the overabundant El Shaddai, God Almighty. Amen. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to ask Ron if you would offer the blessing, if you would unmute and offer the blessing. Yehovah <laughs> Ya El, Yehovah, Hanabaleka, Vekuneka, Yisha, Yehovah, Hanabaleka, Vesemleka, Shalom. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give to you his shalom. We love you all and bless you. And we will continue to pray for each and every one. And in all that we have shared today, may we really have a sense of that God is in this place, that God has, is doing his will. Never think that, that God is just, uh, you know, so transcendent that he is, uh, you know, out of the picture. He is, he is intervening in each and every life. The Holy Spirit of the living God lives within you, and you have his presence, his immediate present, presence continually. So be blessed, and we love you all. Take care of yourselves. The Lord takes care of you, and um, we shall see you. And uh, Nicole, just so you know that we have received uh, uh, someone that would like to connect with you, and I will get that information uh, to you this evening. Okay? Okay, thank you. Okay, bless you. Bless you all. <laughs>